Well, blessed last day of June. Hard to believe. So let us begin in prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son. They have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning and your truth at the close of the day. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day, some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ in whom we are forgiven. We rest now in the peace of Christ and rise in the morning to serve. And I declare to you in that peace, that you are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's see. It is God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 through 7. For our restless souls tonight, it is a, a little thing that Nowen wrote about uh, from the road to daybreak once again. And this is the majesty and humility at Reims. And of course, I know I pronounce all the French words incorrectly, and I apologize. So here we are in Reims in the convent of the Sisters of St. Clair. It is a space filled with silence, prayer, and con contemplation. Through the window of my room, I see in the distance the majestic Cathedral of Notre Dame, rising in the center of the city. In the convent there, where we are staying, there is a small prayer room. It is decorated with a simple stained glass window representing the burning bush, a wooden pillar in which a small tabernacle is carved, some prayer stools and benches, and some small lamps attached to the bamboo covered walls. Nathan and I pray our psalms there and spent some time in silence. It felt very peaceful and restful. Hardly any sounds could be heard. In the afternoon, we went to downtown Reims and visited the Cathedral of Notre Dame, coming from the small prayer chapel into the majestic nave of the cathedral, felt like touching the two extremes of the presence of God in our world, God's hiddenness and God's splendor, God's smallness and God's majesty, God's silence and God's creative word, God's humility and God's triumphant glory. Here in this sacred space built in the 13th century, the Saint King Louis was consecrated, 1226. John, John de Arc attended the coronation of Charles VII in 1429. Charles X was crowned in 1825. Charles de Goulet and Conrad Abenur, I don't know who these people are, but celebrated the reconciliation between the French and the Germans in 1962. I need to brush up on my history, it looks like. So many emotions and feelings, so many tragic and joyous events, so many ugly and beautiful memories, so much pride and so much faith, so much desire for power and so much simple faith. 
During World War I, much of the cathedral of Notre Dame was burned and destroyed. But in 1937, after 20 years of restoration, it was reopened and reconsecrated by Cardinal Suhard. And today visitors come and gaze at its splendor. After some time trying to absorb some of the cathedral's majesty, Nathan and I sat on the small little terrace of the cathedral square and just looked at the three saint-filled entrance portals at the rosette, at the statues of kings and bishops, and at the two massive towers. Once again, he's, you know, Paris is gonna give you architecture, so now one's given it to us too. So just that, that contrast of um, our architecture and where we pray and the, the majesty and the wonder and the expanse of God. Um, and you know, the prayer is the same, <laughs> whether we do it in uh, our, our own, in our rooms at home, um, by a hospital bed, on the side of a road, before an interview, before an important day, um, or in the majest majesty of a cathedral like Notre Dame that's seen a lot of history like we talked about last night or in some of the other cathedrals in let's say Rome and the Vatican, or even at Creator. The where we pray and the, those who have walked through those walls and whose prayers are mixing with ours at the time. I think the, the silence of the humility of a place, like he's a, you know, the, the simplicity of the first place he, were, he prayed at in our text today. Um, there, there are times for very, very humble prayer and realizing that God emptied himself and became that humble. Um, born in a, you know, a stable, laid in a manger, fled for his life um, with Joseph and Mary right after being born. Um, walked around with fishermen and ate with tax collectors and sinners and broke bread and walked a lot <laughs> um, and then suffered and then died and then was laid in a tomb and then came into our humble, humble lives to bring us that hope and love and joy. We have a God of humbleness a God of simplicity, of smallness, of coming into individual lives. I mean, think about how amazing and majestic and great is all of creation and that God comes to you, that you matter that much and that your prayer, wherever you pray, is as important to God as prayers that are given in Notre Dame or in the Vatican or on the top of Mount Sinai or in Jerusalem or wherever in the majesty of our human architecture and the places that we call holy and we build places around them that echo that holiness. And Notre Dame of course has burned again since this was written and I watched it burn and and was saddened too because there is something about those beacons that are visible throughout the whole city that draw your attention and remind you of God's love and God's power and what the, the followers and the disciples of God can do with that power of making something so grand. And not just that, but it's a symbol of all the other amazing and wonderful and, um, all, and at times terrifying things we can do. Because as now and also lists, I don't know the story of all of these, but you know, the Joan of Arc and Car Charles X and, and I was looking through and there's nothing in the, in the, um, the time of Luther, which have been um, Carlo, uh, Charles V and Leo X would be the, the Pope and the emperor um, kind of around that, that era of, of Luther, but you think of these empires that came through and had the coordination there, and then the reconciliation between the German and the French in 1962. I mean, Notre Dame held, as he's saying here, the 
tragic and the joyous, the ugly and the beautiful, the pride and the faith, the desire for power and simple faith. And there's something about our life of faith and our restlessness that that humble and the majesty do meet. And sometimes the majesty humbles us and sometimes the humbleness allows us to see how beloved and how powerful we are because of God and how powerful God is. I mean, this is the creator of heaven and earth. This is the one with, with a word that can actually make things happen. That is the one that, to whom we pray when we're in Notre Dame or in Creator Lutheran or wherever, these places that we have erected so that we can gather in worship and in prayer and bring in all of our everything is the same one that is so humble. So there is times to just marvel at that. I love Christ the King Sunday for that very reason, because we're about to enter Advent, of course, but also the that this is a king who comes in and has the power of the universe in his mouth, in his words, in his fingertips, if you will. And we're about, about to hear the promise of a baby. I love those juxtapositions. And God is full of them, and God can hold it all. So whether today you are feeling tired or energetic, if you're just done today, if you're anxious, if you're worried, if you are mourning and grieving, if you're hopeful, if you had some whimsy today, if you are starting something new or done with projects for a while, all of that, God is there. And we have a God who's as humble and majestic to hold all of that. And it all matters. And it all fits in God's hands. Oh, that's such a wonderful thing to remember. I need to remember that. And I'm sure you all do as well, because we all have restless souls. And let me find our song which I think fits that, The Amazing Grace, is definitely a sweet sound. And the story of Amazing Grace, of course, about how God um, forgives us. <laughs> Into your hands, O oh Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O oh Lord, God of truth. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Guide us waking, O oh Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. 
My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness, I shall see you. When I awake, your presence will give me joy. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, comfort the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now in peace, I will lie down and sleep. You alone, O God, make me secure. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.